On the right, this is a deceptive slide. This is a tiny little object. It's a belt buckle, but it's another one of these images that we follow of the couple seen in profile tenderly embracing each other. Um, and uh, so this, I, I think this is a, such a sweet image, and it is, as I said, at the end of a belt, and belts were notorious amorous gifts. Boccaccio writes all about them, and they could be given secretly, and there's a wonderful belt in the exhibition in which there's actually a p love poem is embroidered onto the belt. Rings, of course. Rings were exchanged in great quantities, and we have um, a, a selection of some of the earliest surviving Italian um, wedding rings. The one on the left is a, has a little diamond, beveled diamond in a gold band, um, and it has an inscription around the edge that says, Lorenzo a Lena Lena, Lorenzo to probably Maddalena or Elena, someone who he's given the nickname Lena Lena. The one on the right, on the contrary, and here two slides are deceptive because, in fact, the, the opening for the, for the finger is way too large for anyone to actually have worn this. This is really a ceremonial ring. And this one was made for a Jewish community. We think that actually synagogues may have owned these rings and used them for the marriage ceremony, about which we know quite a lot. Uh, the shape is probably meant to represent the temple itself, the little architectural shape at the top, which could open up, and in the inside of this one, it says in Hebrew letters, Mazel Tov. So you're married, you've gotten your gifts, you're moving into your home, and then maybe you would have your portrait painted. Uh, we have a gallery of nuptial portraits, but we've been very careful to let people know that they didn't have to be painted at the moment of marriage. They were painted to commemorate something about the couple. And this is a particularly beautiful and complex one by Lorenzo Lotto, so the same artist who painted our Venus and Cupid. And this shows a, a couple from that city of Bergamo in northern Italy, and you can see that they are, they are literally physically linked together, their arms around each other, and then they also form this beautiful figure eight through across the picture plane, linking them together. They look a little sober, and he's holding up um, a paper that says homo nom quam, and pointing at a squirrel. There's been a lot of discussion about what may be going on in this picture, but it is most likely that the inscription is a conflation of some of the lines from the, uh, from the church's wedding ritual, what we still say, what God has put together, let no man rend asunder. And the squirrel in the medieval and Renaissance period was generally considered to be an animal that could take refuge during storms. I and mean, we think of that even now, that a squirrel has its nest in which it can hide during the winter storms. And as you see in the little landscape out on the left-hand side, it's a stormy time. The clouds are scudding across the sky. The trees are bending. And this is probably their... A, a private, almost secret declaration that they will shelter each other during life's storms. So very personal and very psychological, which is um, what an aspect that Lotto brings to all of his works. We then get uh, into galleries in which we look at the way that people's camera or bedrooms, but in an expanded view of that room as being a semi-private room where you could entertain guests. There would be a big letuccio, which is really more like a couch than a bed. So these were rooms that people entered during the course of the day. These camera would be decorated with all sorts of objects and paintings, two great cassone chests, and then around the walls above the height of the shoulders would be set into the wainscoting these spalliere paintings, literally spalla being shoulder in Italian. And we've had remarkable good luck in being able to bring together a really notable group of these spalliere paintings. The three that I'm showing you, which have in fact been separated probably for at least 150, 200 years, we've been able to bring them back together, were done for the wedding of Lorenzo Tornaboni 
and Giovanna delle Albizzi in 1486-1487 and installed in the Tornabuone Palace. They show the story of Jason and the Argonauts, and I just leave you with this very, it, it, all of these pictures raise these kind of issues. So, you know, you're a bride and groom, you get married, you, your room is decorated with picture of Jason and the Argonauts. The final scene is the betrothal of Jason and Medea, and apparently no one then gave thought to what was going to happen next in that wonderful story in which it was going to end, end very badly. But if anyone wants to talk to me about the possible reasons for this, I'd be happy to go on at length. Um, anyway, the th one of the things that really fascinates me about this group is that although they're, they're done, at, they're commissioned at the same time, three different artists are involved in this. And instead of trying to force them to all work in a sort of um, umbrella style, which also happened, here they were each allowed to have their own distinctive personalities come to the fore. We also have a fantastic um, pair of pictures by Domenico Beccafumi, a visionary artist from Siena of the early 16th century. This is one of two, as I say, that comes from the Casa Martelli in Florence. The Sienese at this time loved to decorate their private homes with alantica subjects, with subjects that referred to classical uh, tales. This one comes from Ovid's Fasti and it shows the Lupercalia, a feast when Roman, young Roman noblemen would go to the grotto of Romulus and Remus, and here they are represented here, make sacrifices of goats, and then wrap themselves in goats, um, in, the, in the goat skins, taking big chunks of the pelts back with them to the city, where they would be met by the young nubile women, and they would then whack them with these pelts of, of skin. And the inscription on the uh, lintel describes to us why it's all happening. This was a fertility rite, and the women so struck were, um, had great hopes for fertility. So you see that in these marriage pictures, there could be a very complex story being told, sometimes about culminating in a marriage, but very often culminating in the birth of, or the hope for the birth of children. Um, Botticelli painted one of the most memorable of these groups of spaliere done to, um, to commemorate a wedding. This between a member of the Pucci family, here's that coat of arms, and the Bini family here, you see the Pucci impelled with Bini, um, supported by the Medici, whose coats of arms are right in the center. This is the third of four stories by Boccaccio telling the absolutely dark, supernatural tale of Nastagio degli Onesti. Nastagio is here. Um, he's been rejected by his girlfriend and has gone out into the woods to brood about this, where he sees a horrific scene. That is, a young nude woman attacked by dogs with a knight rushing in who doesn't rescue her. On the contrary, leaps off his horse and strikes her down with his sword, ripping out her heart and entrails and feeding them to the dogs. Nastagio tries to stop this, and he's told no. We are ghosts. This is our posthumous punishment. And they are being punished for uh, sins that are not dissimilar to what's happening in Nastagio's own life, which is that the girl has rejected the man. So in other words, she's gone against society's needs from her. The man in his despair has committed suicide, of course, a terrible sin. And this is a Dantean type punishment that they're suffering. So Nastagio has this great idea that what he will do is set up a banquet for his um, erstwhile girlfriend and her family, and they will witness this, which is what you're seeing now. And lo and behold, she changes her mind and decides that perhaps she should marry him. Boccaccio says uh, she becomes more amenable. Um, and here, her nurse is telling Nastagio that you know, the marriage should take place. And the fourth panel of this series, then, is the grand wedding ceremony. Again, I leave you to ponder the many reasons why this could be considered an appropriate series of pictures in which the young woman is, in fact, being attacked in three of the four pictures um, for, for a young couple.
mysterious and very interesting.